why we do what we do and how it all started. And then I'm going to lurk around the mouse and show you basically in pictures what it's all about. Um, it's really great to be in Bath. My dear friend, Kate, where are you, Kate? There. <laughs> Lives in Bath and um, her daughter is involved with the Transition Town Bath movement, so I know a little bit about what you're doing. What I want to talk to you about today is what we're doing in Tottenham and why we're doing it. And it all kicked off about three years ago when I happened to be at the Landscape Institute Conference in London and Tim Lang, you'll know Tim Lang, he was on the Sustainable Development Commission until relatively recently. And he stood on the stage in his usual really negative fashion and said, the, world, the end of the world is nigh, grow more food. Um, and it was one of those moments, because Tim's just fantastic, where those Damascene moments where you think, got to do something. You know, we've got to act. I've had enough of waiting for other people. There's no environmental leadership around at all. There's more strategies and reports and policy documents that you can check and stick at. There's, we know everything in the entire world we ever need to do to change our behaviour. We just don't have the will to do it. So how could we do something that showed it is possible for ordinary folks in their everyday lives to do things differently? And how could we find a common platform that could inspire us and unite us and make us stronger and kinder and all the other things that we need to be as a species? So what I did was get on a train in London and made it all up between London and Tottenham. I didn't consult, I didn't have meetings, I didn't do anything, I just made it up because there is an urgency to this, and manana, manana, manana will not do. You know, we've been involved in the whole thing about sustainability since Rio, haven't we? We've heard about Local Agenda 21, we've done it, we've been active. it. I used to do local authority stuff, I used to do health stuff, I used to do regeneration stuff. There's lots of stuff I've done for 20 years in the public sector, talking around this topic. But have I seen any major achievements come through? No. Have I seen people's behaviour patterns shift with a sense that there is something really horrendous on the horizon for our kids. Let's really get our act together. No. So I take a view that we must have been doing something wrong. And it's time for us in our everyday lives to try and show some leadership. It is for others to do what they want to do. It is for the national leaders to do something. It is for the industrialists to do their bit, whatever. But what can ordinary folks do in their everyday lives? So, I didn't make up the name, the, ma the idea was made up, the name was made up by a daughter of a friend of mine, because in the space between Tomadon and London, <coughs> Tomadon, two and a half hours, I thought, why don't we make it a big experiment? Why don't we take the town that I live in, 17,000 people, in a really quite difficult part of the world, the South Pennine, it's totally fantastic if anybody knows it, it's a beautiful part of the world, but you know, it is challenging when it comes to growing things, it does have, you know, Hillsides that aren't very verdant. Uh, there's a lot of sheep around, but there's not a heck of a lot of other produce produced. So, how can we take a town like that and together, speaking a common language of food, unite them and inspire them and see just what happened? Fall off the wall and no will be caught. How could we do that? And that's what Incredible Edible is. And because we've all talked around the three circles of sustainability for a long time, we might as well think about the three different aspects of life in any community and see whether we couldn't gather that, gather that momentum around those three aspects. And those would be community, learning and business. And my view is really straightforward. This is an action oriented programme. This is about people getting it, about a positive programme of action, about something that says to people, you know, I know the horrendous things that we hear about in terms of climate change and some of the issues that you've been dealing with that quite honestly I find, some people find very difficult to get their heads around, the whole PCOR thing, the concepts of sustainability is a word in its own right, what do we mean by it? The climate, it, but these are big concepts that many, many people have no idea how to relate to. But food they get. Food allows them to say, oh yeah, okay, I, I, you know, I either cook it or I grow it, I know what I like or I don't like it. It's a language that, through which we found you can unite a community. So that's why we did food. Emily made up the name Incredible Edible because we wanted to have a title that basically, uh, you know, the rapper said what was in the tin, and that's what it is. It's incredible and it's edible. Um, and we started it by having a public meeting. We just laid our stall out 
um, in a local newspaper about what we thought we needed to do was bring people together to shift their behaviour patterns so that they became more responsible towards the environment with the belief that people can do these things if they're only given the information to do it. We don't need to be top down. We do not need to micromanage people's lives. People will do the right things for their children if they get half a chance to do it. And that's the principle that uh, Incredible Ed Hall operates under. We are not victims, we are activists. We are not passing the book. We don't need a new equation like e equals mc squared. We don't need somebody to give us a check before we can start doing it. We can do it now, as soon as we leave the house, immediately, by taking over land, by growing on it, by thinking about what we're actually buying, by sharing with our neighbours, by having a word with the school and thinking about what can be taught. There's all sorts of things that can happen, but they don't happen overnight. This is a forever project. Now it's started, I'll be doing this till I die, and hopefully that won't be very soon. Because, you know, we have become so detached from the soil, and we have become so reliant on somebody else giving us permission to do something, that we can't turn that around in one, two, three years. This is going to take a long time. But what we found in doing this project is that in an audience of this size, you see the light going on. You do see the light going on and people get really excited about it. You say, I can do that, I understand it. I'm going to start growing cabbages in my front garden and I'm going to make sure I share that with Joe Block next door and we're going to, whatever. And small actions lead to bigger actions and bigger actions lead to things you can point at. And things you can point at demonstrate your point much more effectively than a strategy report or whatever else it might be. And things you can point at will also show other people who are in positions to make major changes around policy what they have to do to do things differently. It's a really simple no-brainer. It's not that we don't know what to do, we've just got to have the will to do it. And we've had a lot of success, you know, because we're completely community-driven, because, you know, we don't have paid employees. Uh, two years into it, we managed to pull a bit of leader funding from Europe. And two of our volunteers, who were mums, are still mums, um, became food inspirers, part-time food inspirers. Because I didn't want a professional community development worker to come and tell us how to do things. This is about us learning through our own mistakes and through that, embracing that action and that shift of behaviour in a way that somebody telling us how to do it would never, it would never happen. So these two mums are now our food inspirers and they work in the community. Other than that, we have no paid employees. We just play to our strengths. And everybody in every walk of life can grab the agenda on one of those three spinning plates. The community, the learning, and the business. I'd like to show you how we're doing some of that stuff, and it's just our approach, it's not everybody's approach, but it seems to have won quite a few uh, supporters, and now we've got various organisations, various towns all over the place, signing up to Incredible Edward. We've got people in Ireland doing it, we've got people in Canada doing it, we've got people in Spain doing it, we've got all sorts of towns all over England doing it, and the doing it is about spinning the three plates together, because what we say is, you can do community growing, that's brilliant, it's fantastic, I love community growing. You can do learning, you can shift what people are taught, informally and formally, around that skilling up of the food agenda. And you can show people that you can produce things locally, that you can support a local economy, that you can keep the money sticking. But only if you spin the three plates together do you build a resilient community. And it's as simple as that, anybody can do it. So you play to your strength on whichever plate you want, and maybe a few people <coughs> make sure the three plates spin together. It's the old Chinese spinning plate trick. And it's fun, and we have a laugh along the way. And we've met friends that, you know, will be with us for the rest of our lives. And none of the people involved in any of this, slightly eccentric though we are, all might be, knew each other before this. But we just had a sense that we had to stop not doing stuff and do it. 